Okay, so this whole concept of through monitoring. Well, if you know my tutorials, then you'll know I'm an old sound engineer going back to the old days of tape. And this concept of through monitoring comes from the days of tape. When we record with the tape machine and a mixer, we always use this uh, technique of through monitoring when we record. And in the modern era, with sequences like Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools, etc., we use the same exact technique. Okay, this concept of through monitoring is really the sort of core of the whole technique of multi-track recording. So it's quite important that you understand it. Um, so let's start by looking at how it works with a mixer and a tape setup, and then that will help you to understand how it translates to a sequencer like Logic. Okay, tape machine, mixer. Now, there are lots of different configurations of mixer, but uh, what I'm going to explain to you now, I'm explaining in the most basic sense. Okay, here's our mixer, and on the left here, these are all the input channels, okay? Now, when we're recording, we don't listen to these input channels, okay? When we're recording, these input channels are used for only one thing, and that is to route the mic and line signals plugged into the channels through to the correct record tracks, okay? So we plug our mic and line signals into the input channels, we adjust the input gain for each channel, so it's getting the correct input level from its signal. And then at the other end of the channels, we set the pan position and the fader level exactly so that each channel is feeding the correct track of the tape machine at the exact correct level for recording. And once that is set, we leave these channels alone. So if these input channels have got their level set exactly to feed the tape machine, and once they're set, they can't be changed, then how do we create a monitor mix to listen to while we record? Well, we do that by creating a mix after the signals have passed through the tape machine in the monitor channel section here. The signals come into the tape tracks at a fixed level set by the input channels. Once they're set, that those, those levels arriving at the tape tracks are fixed. But after the signals pass through the tape machine, then the signal from each tape track arrives at its own little mini channel in the monitor section here where we can adjust the level and the pan position and add basic effects like reverb to create a, a monitor mix here, which feeds our speakers and headphones. So we're monitoring through the tape machine and creating our monitor mix after the signals pass through the tape machine, the record point. And this through signal path creates no delay because the signals pass through the whole loop at the speed of an electrical current, so it's instant like that, right? And that's through monitoring. Now in a sequencer like Logic, or Pro Tools, or Cubase, etc., we do the same technique. We monitor through the record software. We don't listen to the input as we record, we listen to the output. Okay. Now, to follow along with me, you want to have your inspector column open here. And I'll just tell you, in case you're a beginner to Logic, that in the inspector column, on the left here, we always see the monitor channel for the selected track. And on the right of the inspector column, by default, we always see the final stereo channel of Logic's mixer, which feeds the outputs of our audio interface. Okay. So in a sequence of light Logic, the record tracks here in the track column, this is the tape recorder part. And then after the record tracks, we have the monitor channel where we shape the sound that we're listening to as the signal passes through to the outputs of our interface. We listen at the output. We always listen to the output signal. We never listen to the input signal coming in. Right? But in a sequencer like Logic, there are no input channels. There's no input channels in a sequencer like Logic where we can adjust the input level of things plugged into our interface or where we could uh, add EQ or effects, etc. before the signal arrives at the record track. Okay, in a sequencer like Logic, the audio interface itself behaves as the input channels in a mixer and tape setup. Okay? On the audio interface, we plug in our mic or line input, we then adjust the input level to the exact correct level to feed the record track, and once that input level is set, we leave it alone. Then the signal comes into the record track, passes through there to the monitor channel, 
And on the monitor channel, this is where we shape the sound we're listening to as it flows through to the output to our monitor and speaker outputs on our audio interface. We always listen at the output. So look, here's um, a track in its channel. I'll assign this track in its channel to receive on my mic input, input one. We'll look at um, assigning inputs to tracks and channels in more detail further on. So on the input slot here for the monitor channel for the track, I'll assign this track in its channel to receive on input one, my mic input. Boom, and now we can see the signal from the input is getting into the track and from there into its monitor channel because the meter on the track in its channel flickers when I talk on the mic. Yeah! Yeah! Okay, but notice the signal is not then passing through to the final stereo channel of Logic's mixer and off to the output of my interface. I can see the signal's getting into the track in its channel, but at the output of the interface I hear nothing. That's correct. That's how it should be, because remember we turn direct monitoring off on our audio interface. I only hear the signal at the output after it's passed through logic if I activate the input monitor button on the record track. Boom, like that. And now I can hear the signal pass from the audio interface input through the record track, through the monitor channel, and then through to Logic's final stereo mixer channel and off to the outputs of my audio interface. I listen at the output and now I can hear the signal from the input passing through and I hear it at the output. That's through monitoring. And the signal passes through really quickly with no delay. That's why we need a very low sample buffer setting for our audio interface setup. If I set the sample buffer size to a high setting of 1024 samples, now, because of the high buffer setting, it takes longer for the signal to pass through logic. So there's a delay on the signal, making it impossible for me to monitor properly as I perform and record. But with a low sample buffer setting, the signal passes through logic really quickly. Okay, there is a delay, but it's just a few milliseconds. So as I sing into the mic, I hear it at the output and the signal passes through so quickly, I hear it in real time with no delay. That's through monitoring. And it's really important we use this technique. Right? So the signal comes in at a fixed level from the input of the interface into the record track. At this point here, we can capture a recording then the signal passes into the monitor channel where we shape the sound we're listening to as the signal then passes through to the output. So after the record track, we can set the monitor channel to be any pan and volume level that we want. We can add any effects in EQ, etc. And all that happens after the record point. So on this channel for the track here, I'll add a reverb. with a hall sound. Okay, so now the signal comes into the record track, passes through that track, into the monitor channel where it passes through the reverb. I'm listening at the output, so I hear that reverb on the signal as it passes through. That gives me a nice reverb sound to record with. Okay. Do a deer, a female deer. But anything I record on the track, when I play that recording back, it's passing through the same channel with the same effects, same EQ, same pan and volume position. So anything I record, when I play it back, it sounds exactly the same as the signal I listen to as I record. Because both the monitor signal I listen to at the output as I record, and anything I play back that's recorded on the track, both pass through the monitor channel with the same settings. And that allows me to do seamless drop-ins because the record signal is identical to the playback signal. That's very important. We can't do seamless drop-ins without that. But the other thing is that the record point is here before the monitor channel shaping the sound we're listening to. So everything that we record is captured completely clean and dry. If I take this reverb off the monitor channel, I've recorded a completely clean, dry signal. Go a deer. A female deer with no effects, no nothing on it at all. Which means that after recording, I can change the channel 
in the mix to make this recording sound any way I want. I could change the reverb to a different reverb. Now it sounds different. Go a deal, a female deal. Okay. Let's take that reverb off. Reverb is off now. Okay, so there you go. That, that's, the, that's the whole concept of through monitoring. We never listen to the inputs as we record. We listen to the signal at the output after it's passed through the recorder. We capture the recording at this point always clean and dry at a fixed level set by the input feeding the track. But after that point, then the signal, whether it's playback or the signal passing through as we record, in both cases that signal passes through the modest channel where we shape the sound we're listening to, both as we record and the sound that we hear when we play back. We always capture a clean recording, which means that afterwards we can change it to anything we want. We always listen at the outputs after the signal's passed through the software. We don't listen to the inputs as we record. And that is the whole concept of through monitoring. It works the same in every sequencer. Okay, And this through monitoring technique is, as I said, the whole core of the whole technique of multi-track recording. So now we know that, we can move on and look at the mechanics of um, recording in Logic.